guys welcome back today we're doing another tag video but this one is like a newer one I have been watching everybody do all of these eyeshadow palette tags and I've been watching so many of them um, and so I started thinking about like what my answers would be with the eyeshadow palette collection that I have right now and my god those were hard questions and I got to thinking about it and I was like this is a lot more difficult than like I thought it was going to be. So then I decided to do one myself, because why not? Um, so this is the eyeshadow palette tag. Allie Glines and Samantha March are the ones who started this eyeshadow palette tag, so I will tag or link their channels and their videos for this down below. Um, and Allie was actually the first one that I saw who had done it. And it was really interesting to watch, just to see all of her answers, and that kind of just delved me deep into this rabbit hole of other people's videos and now here we are um and we're gonna do it ourselves because I have a good eyeshadow palette collection um I just did that huge declutter I still have way too many palettes and it's just kind of you know and it's nice to actually think about it because I'm sitting here like trying to figure this out like as I'm watching the videos I was like oh well that's easy mine would be you know and it's it's a lot more difficult than you think it would be just to just to even like try to figure out what your old like I have no idea what my oldest palette is like is that something I'm supposed to know I know what it used to be but then I got rid of that one so now what is my oldest palette you know what I mean like it's just it's a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be so then I was like okay well I'll do my own palette I'll do my own tag and I will pull out um the stuff that I, I'm gonna need you know I've got my little palettes over here and oh my god it took so long just to like and I, it doesn't help that I've got them sorted in different places but this is a hard tag to do like it's you know, and so I'm really glad I'm doing it because it puts things in perspective for me and my bad shopping habits. Okay, so I do have the tag questions here. We're going to jump right into this because I feel like this is going to be definitely a chattier video. Um, if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And if you have done a video like this on your own channel, link it down below or let me know down below and I can like click on your little username uh, because I'd be really interested to watch them like I said this has been like what I've been binging the last couple of days and it's really fascinating so I'm gonna start with my newest palettes um, now technically between subscription boxes this month and a mystery box that I bought um, I have a few so I've chosen to showcase these these are the Huda Beauty obsessions I got Ruby obsessions and Emerald obsessions both of these came in the Huda Beauty mystery box um, which I I'm not doing a video on that box, but I did do an Instagram post, or I have got one that I'm going to post. I don't remember if I posted it or not already, but that'll be on my Instagram, which is linked down below, to show like the full contents of the Huda Beauty mystery box. I bought the large one, I think, and it came with three palettes. These are two of them, um, but I'm really excited about these, honestly. I love these. I think that they're so cute. I'm actually like one of the Huda Beauty the neon pink obsessions is what I'm currently using I don't I feel like oh no I'm just touching them all um, is currently the palette that I'm trying to pan and I think that these definitely make it a little bit easier because the pans are smaller it's only nine shades I love the monochromatic ish look they aren't like as monochromatic I don't feel like as the ColourPop ones because they've got a few different shades in there but I don't know they are pretty similar I really like these though the quality is beautiful they're tiny so they're really easy to travel with and I this is kind of my newest palette like I got them this month but I also got a few other ones but I didn't actually like, go out and purchase any of them anyways this is the newest one I I love I love these though I've got a whole bunch of these luckily I got these in a mystery bag and I did not already have them which whoo, whoo for me um so that's that's exciting and those are my newest my oldest palette here's the thing it used to be that Urban Decay that like sustainable shadow box palette um, and I got rid of that one. I was going to try to pan that one. I used it for like a month or two and then it did not go well. It was just so old. Like that was literally probably 11 or 12 years old, if not more. And it just did not, it didn't work right. So the one that I think is the oldest that I have right now. And if you guys are able to like go back on Instagram and prove me wrong, please don't. Uh, I'm doing my best. I don't, I'm not, I don't know the facts. Or the dates so this is all just a big guesstimation but I'm pretty sure my oldest one now would be the OG naked I got this I think when around the time it first came out um, which is surprising because I feel like I haven't used it very much the, the uh, Urban Decay used to be like they are my favorite brand but they used to have like a lot edgier stuff and I know Urban Decay naked is kind of what like set off this whole neutral movement and everybody was obsessed with this it sold out everywhere it was so freaking hard to find 
um, but I managed to find one and I have used it a lot like I definitely have dips and stuff going but I was also doing much simpler eye looks back in those days and I don't know why I don't use it very often anymore but the, I'm pretty sure that this is my oldest because this is definitely it's one that like I cannot get rid of I refuse to it's there's so many memories here and this is definitely one of the Urban Decay was the first like higher end brand that I purchased but that was also in like high school and I'm pretty sure once I graduated high school because I don't have any of those palettes left anymore that the one that I decluttered was the last one but I'm pretty sure that this is the closest that I would have to that time period I don't know when did this come out I don't even think they make this one anymore didn't they discontinue it it's old but I love it and I can't get rid of it because it's old the next question is your most expensive palette. So here's the thing. I'm gonna link. I'm, I'm gonna link the palettes down below that are still available. Um, if you're interested in them, by the way, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. But I will be linking the palettes that I'm talking about down below if they are still being made. So here's the thing with the most expensive one, though. I don't keep track of the prices of like what my makeup costs. Like I used to do that in my spreadsheet, and I don't anymore. So this is a total guess. I went through a whole bunch that I was like, well, these were on the more expensive side, and the highest number that I was able to come up with was 60 bucks, which. I have quite a few eyeshadow palettes that cost me $60 and I don't know why. Like I, it's not necessarily that I paid for that but like that's the price tag and like I don't know why. That's a thing. But so I picked one of them. I know I've got a couple. Um, I just picked one and that would be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina collection. This is volume one. I have also got volume two and three. I know they just released volume four. I talked about that in my latest um, like purchaser pass which I think I'm going to change the name on that. Anyways, I'll link that video down below if you're interested in that. I, oh, broke a shadow. I am not 100% sure, like, if I'm going to get that one or not. Um, here's the thing. I have these all stacked up on my little thing here. Um, and I had kids run through here and knock them all over. <laughs> that was E2, too. That was, like, a matte orange shade. I need to, like, dump this somewhere. Oh, the travesty. Does that count as using it up, though? No. This, I believe, like, so I'm pretty sure that $60 is my most expensive palette. Um, I have a couple of these, and then I have a couple more. I'm completely blanking on. I pulled all these out last night. I don't remember what else cost 60 bucks. I think it was, uh, I don't know, Too Faced maybe? I'm pretty sure. I think there were a couple of Urban Decay's that were, like, up there in price. But I went ahead, and I'm going to talk about this one, because these are very, like, what? They didn't fall that hard. Maybe I shouldn't buy $60 eyeshadow palettes anymore. Maybe that's what the universe is trying to tell me right now. These are my most expensive ones. I have more that are around this price point. I don't think I have anything more expensive than this, though. Why I purchased these for so much money, I don't know. It was the collector's mentality inside of me, really. That's what it was. Um, yeah, I wouldn't probably, I don't know, would I do it again? I don't know. We'll have to see if I purchase volume four. I will say, I really do like these palettes. Are they worth $60? No. If you can find them on sale, should you pick them up? Maybe. Do you like them? is this I mean like there's a lot of shades in here the formula is very nice not as good as the regular Anastasia Beverly Hills formula but it's pretty good I actually like them I love the vibrant shades I love the different finishes these palettes make me excited like this is what I like in a palette but I'm also kind of over these oversized palettes and I'm liking more of like those little mini nine pan ones so meh I don't know I'm torn myself on these. I have no idea. I'm a little bit more upset now that two shades have fallen out, but I have no idea. So, or the next category is your most affordable palette. Once again, I don't know exactly how much all my stuff costs. I don't know like the retail pricing of it all. I'm almost positive that the ColourPop 9 Pan palettes are my most affordable ones because these are $12. I do have a ridiculous amount of these, especially in the monochromatic format, but I'm pretty sure that these are my most affordable ones. Um, I did have, there was something else the, oh, the like the Morphe palettes are also the smaller ones are also around twelve dollars. But I figured I would showcase these because if you're looking for affordable eyeshadows, this is the way to go. I love the monochromatic ones. They have got like little neutral ones. They've got like little. They don't. They're not all monochromatic, but I am obsessed with these. The formula of these is so good for twelve. Like even like even if it was more expensive than that, I'd be down for that. But I love ColourPop because they're so affordable. The formula is amazing. They come in such cute packaging. 
Um, the other ones, they do have a couple that come in cardboard packaging, which I personally prefer because it's easier to recycle, but I know a lot of people prefer, like, the hard plastic because it feels nicer. I don't know. I freaking love these, though. And these are magnetic, so if you want to, like, depot them into something else, it's really easy to do. I accidentally did it yesterday when they fell. This one fell and opened up. I, uh, who let me do this? Who? Anyways, these are the most affordable ones I'm pretty sure that I own. Um... I don't have a lot of drugstore eyeshadow palettes because I have yet to find something that the quality is like... I do not have good luck with drugstore eyeshadow palettes whatsoever. I've tried so many of them. Like, I really miss the days of like the Wet n Wild 8 pans. Do they still make those? Because those were worth it. Those were like five bucks. <gasps> I wonder why I got rid of those. I did really like them. Mm. The next category is your everyday palette. So I don't really have like an everyday palette because I use different palettes all the time. Um, and I don't, and I typically use like what's it, whatever's in a project pan or whatever my number generator picks. So it's not like I'm just constantly reaching for something. But I have noticed though that if I don't have anything picked out and I've got to do my makeup in like a really big hurry or if I'm going on a trip and I just need to grab something, there tends to be one palette that I go for time after time after time. And that is the Urban Decay Naked 3. I don't know why. This just seems to be like my go-to because it's all neutrals. It's a very easy to work with. And this just seems to be like... Which is ironic because I'm not the biggest neutral fan, but this is just so, like, regardless of what I have planned, um, regardless of what's going on, I can put together a look with this, and if I do want to add some color, I just grab, like, a single eyeshadow or a cream eyeshadow, toss it in my bag, too, and this just is my go-to. Um, I've gotten some pretty good use out of this, too, over the years. You can tell that I really love the shade that the name was scratched off of and the other one. I think that's a dust. I don't know. But it's a really good palette. Um, it's been with me for years, and this is definitely one that I continue to go back to when I need something really quick and really easy. So I would call this my everyday palette, just because if I need something, I just grab that one. You know, I get. I think that. I think that counts. Um, the next category is your most colorful palette. As you love me some rainbows, and I, I have several really colorful palettes, and so I could be wrong. I feel like this might be like a little subjective, but I'm going with it anyways. This is literally called the She's a Rainbow Palette. This is the ColourPop She's a Rainbow Palette. I have talked about this so many times. I did a video, like, if I could only keep 10 eyeshadow palettes, and I'm pretty sure that this is in it for, like, just so I had a colorful palette. So I'll link that video down below if you're interested in it. But this palette, this, it, so it comes as, like, a whole bunch of singles, and then they give you a magnetic palette to put everything in. This is the magnetic palette that I got, which, I'll be honest, I don't like. This does not scream rainbow to me at all, but then you see the inside. So I don't even know if this is technically considered a palette because it's a magnetic palette with a bunch of single shadows in it. They literally, like, they just sent little magnetic, which I mean, like, I'm cool with because I can rearrange it if I want to. So I put it together like this, which I'm pretty sure matches the picture that ColourPop has on their website. But this, it's rainbow, rainbow. There's a couple of, like, pressed glitters in there. You've got some matte shades. You've got some shimmer shades. You've got some, oh, just... You got the shades, man. Like, I love this. I don't use it very often, though, come to think about it. Because I tend to reach for their monochromatic palettes if I'm going for, like, a specific look. And I don't tend to do, like, a bunch of, like, rainbow looks. I'm going to have to reach for this more. But this is, I think, one of my most colorful palettes because there's, like, this is kind of a neutral. And that's about it. So I think that this is definitely, if not my most colorful palette, one of them, which I feel like should still count. The next category is your smallest palette. Um, I don't know, like, so I consider anything that has more than one shadow in it a palette. This one has five, though, so I'm assuming that this counts. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Lila Palette. Uh, this is so tiny. The formula, I have not tried a full-size Natasha Denona, like, full-size eyeshadow palette, so I can't speak to that. I have heard the formula of this isn't as good as those, and the formula for this is okay. Definitely would not intrigue me to buy the full size, but it's all right. I love these shades, though. I love the purplish shades. I purchased this on sale, I think, at Sephora before I stopped shopping at Sephora, and it's decent. Not the greatest, but not, like, the absolute worst either. Um... I'd be interested to see the difference between this and her full size shadows, but this is definitely my smallest one because it's just mini, mini tiny. 
it's cute, really good for travel. And then the category after that is show us your biggest palette. This one was pretty easy to do because I have one palette that's just way larger than everything else, and that's the Morphe James Charles palette. Like fairly recently, within the last year and a half-ish, and this is, I mean like just size, it's massive. Like even compared to the ABH Norvina, it's just so large. So this is definitely my biggest and you could also like this might even be a contender for being like the most colorful but there's a lot of like neutrals and like lighter shades in here as well which is why I didn't put that for the most colorful. Um, I like this though. It's beautiful. It really is. There's a lot of really good shades. The quality of this and the Jaclyn Hill palette for Morphe I think are the best quality that they have. This one is a little on the patchy side, so if you want to try out something from Morphe, I highly suggest the Jaclyn Hill palette. That is what I have found to have had the best eyeshadows, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Morphe. I like Morphe. They're a good brand. It's a really pretty palette, though. I haven't used it as much as I would have liked to because it is so large. I kind of wish that I had waited for, like, that mini to come out and just purchased the mini because this is just... It's a little much. I don't think it needed to be that much. You know what I mean? It's it's big but it's a good palette so we work with it okay the palette with the best memory <sighs> that probably would have been that urban decay that I declutter but I don't have that one anymore so I went with this when my husband and I first got together we didn't have a whole lot of money um, and it was very difficult like I didn't have a whole lot of money for makeup or anything like that so he would tend to like surprise me when like um, things that he knew that I really wanted were coming out and one of those things was the Urban Decay Vice Limited this is an old as hell palette um, they used to have these Vice palettes which were amazing they're like a decent size and the closures on them are terrible but this is the Vice Limited this was a limited edition palette I think they released like one go of it and then stopped and this was in a time when like because now that's just how new releases are um, and then it'll get re-released later and this is in a time when that didn't happen like companies were putting out a lot less releases at a time there was a lot like it was like seasonal instead of every day and so it was a big deal when things like this got released especially things that were, were, were marketed as limited edition there's only gonna be one release get it or it's gone and I he got so anyways my husband got this for me when we really didn't have a whole lot of money and I didn't have a whole lot of makeup and it was just oh, it was so sweet and I freaking love this palette and I like there's a good part of me that like doesn't even want to use it because of that because this is probably one of my favorite palettes but like memory's sake not like color's sake although I do love the shades in here like it's got a nice little mix but I, I this is probably the one with my best memory because it was just so sweet of him he's such a freaking sweetheart um, and it did mean a lot to me because otherwise like there's no other way that I would have been able to like we, he probably shouldn't have purchased that himself but it was very nice of him though and I love that palette I really do and I cannot get rid of it but that's probably the one that like means the most to me I guess because that's the one that just has those those nice memories even though it is on the older side now um, a palette worth the hype Dude, the Dose of Colors Desi and Katie Fruncation. I don't know why. Like, when I... So, first of all, I love this package. This is amazing. And second of all, when I look at this palette, I'm like, ew, why? And I don't... Oh, you guys. Like, I was one of those people who did not believe that this was... I mean, I like, I'm sure it was good, you know? But, like, look at it. It looks boring. I freaking love this palette. There is so much that you can do with this. There are some beautiful, so unique shades. This is so worth the hype. If you don't have it, get it. Ulta has it a lot during their 21 Days of Beauties for like half off. That's, I think, when I got mine a couple years back. But it's such a good freaking palette. The shades are beautiful. They blend beautifully. There are so many different looks that you can do. Like, if you have one palette, I would probably recommend, well, maybe one with like more shades. But like, this would be a close contender because this is just gorgeous. It's so stunning. The shades are so beautiful. Mine is piece of crap because I use it all the time. Um, this would actually probably be like my everyday palette because I, I really like this one. But seriously, this, this guy's this. Totally worth the hype. I cannot believe it took me so long to get it. But now that I have it, I completely understand and I'm obsessed with it. And I just, I need, you guys need to try it. Like I need everybody to try that palette. It is one of the best palettes I've ever used. And if you've been following me for a while, you've seen my eyeshadow palette collection. And this is one of my favorites. It's so freaking good. Thank you. Okay, the next one is a palette not worth the hype. I am probably going to get so much hate for this. Okay, hear me out. 
I think the issue, and I think the reason why I think this is not worth the hype is because I have such an oversized eyeshadow palette collection. Because I feel like if I didn't, I might agree with everyone. But I'm gonna have to go with the Urban Decay Born to Run. If we don't agree, it's cool. It's just makeup. We don't gotta fight about it. It's all right. I know that this is like such a beloved palette and you guys know that I am an Urban Decay stan. They are my favorite brand. I love them so much. Here's the thing though. I wasn't planning to get this when it first came out. I love the packaging idea though. Like these are all pictures that like their customers have taken. Um, I love the concept of it. It's pretty. And, and I, I, yes, I have used it a lot. I just don't think it was worth the hype that it got because people were spouting this as the, if you, oh, if you, if you're only going to have one eyeshadow palette, let it be this one. I don't get it. I don't. It's beautiful. The shades are nice. There is a good range because you've got some purpley, some reds, some oranges, some browns, some blues, some greens, a bunch of neutrals, a bunch of mattes. This really is like an all-in-one palette. And I do agree with that. It just doesn't excite me. Like... I expected because and I kept hearing people talk about it and it, everybody everybody was talking about it and I kept hearing people talk about it like this is the be all end all like throw all your other eyeshadow palettes away this is the only one you need I don't get it it's not exciting to me like I don't like the fact that there's a random ass purple shade over here does somebody know why they did that because I don't like that um, and I just I don't think it's super cohesive I don't I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's a beautiful palette. It's got a great formula. Uh, it's Urban Decay, so most, most of their stuff does. It's, it's, it really is beautiful. I just don't think that it's like the be all end all. I expected it to be a lot more, like once I got it and started using it, and it was going to be a life changing eyeshadow palette. And that is totally on me. But I was just expecting so much more, and this is what I got. And it just doesn't bring out that excitement and that joy that like all of the other Urban Decay palettes do for me. You know what I mean? I don't know. It was kind of let down. So for me, it's not worth the hype. Um, like I said, I get it's a very beloved palette, and I'm not in trying to insult anybody. For me personally, though, I don't get it. I don't. I. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, and then we are going to show my favorite palette from a favorite brand. So uh, my favorite makeup brand is Urban Decay. My favorite palette from them would have probably been like that sustainable one because I just I don't know why I had such a makeup crush on that palette but since that's gone it's this one this is the moon dust palette so these are um just like these beautiful shimmer shades they're so bright they're so colorful they're just absolutely like and this is not a palette that you can really use by itself you kind of have to have um like other shades and then almost use these as like toppers but like look at that I mean are mm, they're just so beautiful and I don't use this one very often because I'm not a super huge fan of palettes that I can't use on their own so this does not get nearly the love that it should get but I do use it sometimes and every time I use it I'm like Ooh. it's just so pretty like looking at it is pretty the packaging is pretty like everything about this is beautiful and I, this is, yeah, that's my favorite. The last palette that we're going to talk about today is my most used palette. So to figure this out, I actually went through my makeup inventory and figured out um, which palette had the most pans in it, which I don't really know if this is entirely accurate because like that Born to Run looked a lot more used than this one. But this is the palette that I own that has the most pans in it as a single palette. This palette has three pans in it at least that I've written down. I could be wrong because there could have been pans that I just didn't write down, but this is what I'm going with. This is the Smashbox Cover Shot Petal Metal Eye Palette. Um, I freaking love this palette. It's so tiny, and yes, it is neutrals, but it's so beautiful. I know that this was in a project pan for a while. This shade, this like red shade right here, I died for that. Um, it's shocking to me that this is my most used one because if you ask me like what my favorite palettes were, this is this would not come up. I do think the Smashbox Cover Shop palettes are totally slept on though. They're really good palettes, like genuinely really good. Uh, that It was surprising to me too though. I did not see that one coming. But this is my most used one and that's where we are in life. I, I really like eyeshadow palettes but this child, like this tag was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. So if you have not done it, please do it and let me know that you've done it down below because I, I, this was so difficult and I need to know what other people think and I've been watching these 
and everybody's answers are really intriguing to me like I'm getting like some things like I'm totally I'm like okay yeah that makes total sense and then some things I'm like what like it's just it's so funny how different all of our viewpoints are on something as simple as eyeshadow palettes and I just I love that I love the psychology of all of it but that is my eyeshadow palette tag thank you guys so much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed like I said if you do this leave a comment down below and let me know because I would love to watch it please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of me and my sad broken palettes thank you guys so much for joining me today I'll catch you next time